In today's episode, I'm taking a look at four brand new perfume parlour creations, which are all inspired by fragrances from the Luby World collection from high street fashion brand Louboutin, who were probably the most famous for their red soled shoes, uh, but they also do a luxury line of perfumes costing over £200 per bottle. But today I'm excited to bring you four copies from the perfume parlour, uh, which aren't going to break the bank and which I think are all pretty amazing. So pull up a comfy chair and let's see what these are all about. Welcome to Mags Frags. <laughs> Yes, hello again and welcome to this special perfume parlour episode of Mags Frags. My name's Paul and like I said in the intro, today's video is all about the perfume parlour's interpretation of four fragrances from the Luby World Signature Collection from Christian Le Bouton. The uh, range was launched in November 2020 with seven fragrances, which I have to say come in the cutest bottles I've ever seen, uh, but since then there's been a further four new releases, so the range now stands at 11. The originals uh, retail for around about £235 each for a 90ml bottle size, but you can pick up all four of these extract sprays from the perfume pile for around £80 and still save over £150 if you're not bothered about the uh, fancy bottle design. I can tell you that two of these fragrances are fruity floral scents and the other two are based more around an amber woody scent profile so there's something for everyone whether you enjoy fresh perfumes or uh, ones that are slightly more on the darker side. But before I begin today's rundown, if you're interested in picking up any of these bottles that feature in today's video to try out for yourself, uh, you can use my unique discount code to get yourself 10% off your first order, which I'll leave a link to down in the description. The link will direct you to a login page and you will be asked to create a login name and a password, uh, but once you've set up uh, an account and logged in and made your purchases, your discount will automatically be applied and it'll be waiting for you at the checkout. And as always guys, just a quick, uh, quick disclaimer, I don't work for the Perfume Parlour and this video is in no way sponsored by them in any way, so these opinions that you're uh, about to hear today are my own opinions and I did uh, buy all of these fragrances with my own money to do this review. I do however receive a small commission uh, for recommending you to join their website, so just by clicking on the link and, and joining the site you'll save you 10% while supporting the channel and also helping me to bring you some more free content in the future. Okay, so the first one that I'm going to talk about in today's haul goes by the name of Richness and the perfume parlour code on this one is 1829. This one is a copy of Luby Doo, which always reminds me of Scooby Doo, uh, which is a fruity floral perfume with a top note of strawberry, a heart note of rose and a base note of cedar. This one opens up very bright, fresh and fruity with a very nice wild strawberry note that isn't too sweet and it's definitely not an artificial synthetic strawberry note which smells juvenile. It's quite the opposite in fact and because it's accompanied by a hint of rose this smells quite mature straight away and it's one that's going to probably uh, appeal to women maybe over the age of 30 who's uh, quite classy and sophisticated. Like I say, it's supported by a pleasant, delicate rose that doesn't dominate or conflict with the strawberry in the opening, and together you get a really uplifting and gentle sweetness that will make you think of the spring or the summertime. As it dries down, the cedar adds a, a touch of depth and a mild, clean woodiness, and I have read a few reviews where people say that the cedar in this one dominates the scent, uh, but I don't get that at all, and uh, for me it's probably the rose that stands out a touch more than the other two notes. Uh, but you do get lots of semi-sweet fruitiness and a bit of woodiness, so the rose doesn't come off smelling like your grandma's handbag. And this is what I'd describe as uh, like a perfect definition of a fruity floral scent. This is definitely uh, a feminine smelling perfume and it makes me think of like a ladies day at a horse racing uh, event when you're dressed up in your flowery dresses and your big hats. It's quite flamboyant and uh, not really one to wear as like an everyday casual fragrance in my opinion. 
The performance on this is really good. It has a very strong projection. It lasts uh, a good seven or eight hours easily. And uh, like an idiot, I sprayed it on the back of my hand the other day when I uh, were testing it out. Uh, and I was testing it against the original and it, it was projecting off me for absolutely hours and hours and I couldn't get it off. Even after I've washed my skin, I couldn't get this off. So it really is a, a decent performer. So I ended up uh, digging out all my paper tester strips to test the others. But overall, I'd say that this is a very pleasant and fairly linear fruity floral scent which I think most women will really enjoy but my only concerns is that um, some of you may think it leans ever so slightly on the mature or old-fashioned side if you're uh, either in your late teens or your early 20s okay next up is one called love red and the perfume palette code on this one is 1837 this one is a copy of Luby Rouge, which is a spicy amber fragrance with a top note of cardamom, a heart note of iris and a base note of vanilla. Okay, so this is a warm, spicy fragrance, which I don't think I'd have a problem personally wearing as a guy whatsoever. Um, it opens up with a very prominent cardamom note, so you do get a nice spicy kick uh, from the initial spray, but you can also instantly detect the powderiness from the iris and also the sweet, creamy vanilla in the base. And it's very rare that you actually come across a scent uh, where the notes are so transparent and recognisable right out of the gate. It's all perfectly balanced, and overall, the smell is soft, powdery and sweet but each time you smell it if you go in with the mindset to try and actually isolate each individual note they seem to just separate like magic in this one think of the vanilla whilst you smell it and boom it's a vanilla heavy perfume think of the cardamom and the spiciness is just there front and center or think of the iris and guess what the powdery floral note just jumps out and says hi here i am uh, so really it's a it's a great smelling fragrance uh, that's uh, versatile and mass appealing you could wear it pretty much all year round apart from the uh, perhaps in the hottest days of summer I think it would shine more on cooler days because it does tend to lean slightly more on the sweeter side and it perhaps could get a, a bit cloying if you went a little bit heavy on the sprays again though this is quite a refined and classy smelling scent that isn't too girly or floral uh, so one for all you women out there that tell me off for uh, only reviewing ultra feminine perfumes it's definitely more dark and ambery with a spicy edge and one I wouldn't hesitate to recommend to you for you to try out yourself and even if you don't like it I'm sure your husband or your boyfriend would uh, definitely take this one off your, off your hands as long as you uh, remove the label on the back with the uh, love red name on. Okay so the third one in the haul goes by the name of Love Hope and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1234. This one is a copy of Luby Funk, which is the second of the fruity floral ones, but this time everything just gets a little bit darker than the Luby Doo copy that I uh, talked about first in the video. And it starts out with black currant as the opening note, followed by Turkish rose in the heart, and the base in this one is patchouli. Yeah, this one opens up with a slightly sweet yet slightly sour conflict between the black currant and the Turkish rose. And it's perhaps not quite as fruity and as playful as the Luby Doo copy in the opening. But for the most part, after the dry down, it's the uh, the Turkish rose which is the most prominent note. And there's the odd time when I smell this, and it kind of reminds me more of uh, a rose scented room freshener uh, than it does a perfume because the note of rose is uh, so dominant in this one. The patchouli adds a mild hint of earthiness which lurks around in the background but it never goes too dark and it remains fairly fresh and bright throughout. However it's more of a, a nighttime version of the Luby Doo copy and I find it to be a touch more rich and serious smelling whereas the Luby Doo is a, a bit more playful and fruity. This is one that does give me mature vibes though, so it'll probably be best suited to women in their 40s or 50s who are probably in high flying positions at work and uh, maybe dress in a power suit. But I certainly don't get like a, a young girl's vibe from this whatsoever. It's very nice and it's actually quite a sexy smelling perfume, but I'm not the biggest fan of the uh, rose note personally, so it's always difficult for me to kind of recommend them. Uh, but what I will say is that if you do like rose heavy perfumes, then I'm sure you'll really enjoy this one. It's uh, really long lasting and you'll get a full day's wear out of it with ease. So give it a go and see what you think of it. 
Yes, I'm the last one in today's haul. Goes by the name of Coronet, and the perfume palette code on this one is 1836. This one is a copy of Luby Crown, which is probably the darkest and most challenging one out of the four today, especially if you enjoy more delicate and feminine smelling perfumes, because this is definitely, uh, it leans kind of more stereotypically masculine, uh, and what you kind of expect to smell from a, a scent marketed as a, a men's fragrance. It's a woody, earthy scent uh, with a top note of cedar, a heart note of patchouli and a base note of tonka beans. Uh, and sure enough, right from the initial spray, you get lots of clean pencil shavings type woodiness, some soil like earthiness from the patchouli and lots of su uh, sweetness from the tonka beans in the base. And it smells absolutely wonderful. And I'm so glad they decided to uh, do this women's review because I would have never discovered this. Uh, and it's one that I definitely intend to keep hold of for sure and uh, I will be rocking the hell out of this one. It's dark and resinous with a bit of smokiness but yet you also get a delicious sweet tonka that stops it from becoming too dry or dirty. This is without doubt the most ideal autumn and winter scent and one that would also be perfect to wear dressed up for a night out or an evening event. You could also throw on a pair of jeans and a leather jacket, spray a few sprays of this and then instantly become uh, a badass rock chick. Uh, but just be mindful that this isn't a, a pink and fluffy Ariana Grande perfume or a, a floral Miss Dior, so approach this with caution. Uh, if you are looking for a, like an alpha female scent then maybe this is not for you uh, but I think this is very sexy and one that I would uh, definitely think would smell great on a woman. Okay, so in summary, I'd say that the most mass appealing and easiest ones to recommend out of these four as a blind buy are the uh, Luby Rouge and the Luby Do copies. And in my opinion, uh, these would be more suited to women that are just looking for an everyday signature perfume that just smells really pleasant. Both of these are super versatile and super long lasting and uh, I can't see many people smelling these and not liking them. The other two are slightly more, shall we say, daring, and the uh, the Luby Crown is my personal favourite, judging solely on which one I'd be more likely to wear myself. And this uh, is uh, for women that want a little bit more of oomph uh, than what you get in the uh, the standard female marketed designer perfumes. Finally, the uh, the Luby Funk is my least favourite, but that's only because I'm not a fan of the note of rose, and it's got nothing to do with the quality of the scent. Uh, so if you do enjoy the note of rose, I'm sure you'll absolutely love this one. Okay, so that's about it for this cheeky little Christian Louboutin inspired episode of Perfume Parlor Fragrances. And I've uh, given in to peer pressure and decided to do another Perfume Parlor haul video, uh, specially dedicated to women's perfumes. So that'll be uh, the fourth one in the women's series now. Uh, and there's some pretty good ones in that next haul. So keep a lookout for that over the next few days. I'm also hoping to uh, feature lots more women's perfumes from the Essence Fall and KDJ inspired so if copy fragrances are your thing then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon and that way you won't miss uh, any future uploads. 75% of people who watch my videos don't subscribe and I'd love to get that down to around about 50% so go on press that red button you know you want to. So once again thank you very much for tuning into this latest episode. Stay safe, keep smelling fresh and I'll see you very soon for another one. Bye bye for now.